I wanted to welcome everybody. My name is Ellen Pensky, and on behalf of Packet Fusion, I want to welcome you to today's Lunch and Learn Roundtable. Today's Lunch and Learn is sponsored by NICE, and it's all about growing the role of artificial intelligence in contact center as a service and how it can transform your business. For those of you who don't know NICE, and that's just a nice company to say, isn't it? Um, they're a worldwide leader in AI powered self-service and agent assistance CX software for the contact center and beyond. There's over 25,000 organizations, including over 85 of the Fortune 100 companies that partner with NICE to transform and elevate every customer interaction. Their platform, the CX1, is known as the world's number one cloud native customer experience platform. So today's session will last just under an hour and we hope you will engage and ask questions in chat, participate in our polls. So we, we really wanna hear from you. We've got a lot of good comments, a lot of good information today, but we really wanna hear from you. So you can put any of your questions in chat and we'll be able to take them at the end of the session. And now let me introduce our speakers. First, we have Richard Clavett of Packet Fusion, and he's going to be today's host as Matt Pingator is on a well-deserved vacation. Richard is the Managing Director of Contact Center Solutions for Packet Fusion, a role he's held for the past four years. Overall, he has 25 plus years of experience, mostly in the contact center industry, and has a proven track record as a trusted advisor with expertise in customer retention and working with key shareholders. He is acknowledged as someone who cares about his customers so much so that they become friends for life. That's what we know about you, Richard. Uh, also joining the conversation today is Christy O'Donnell from NICE. Christy is the Director of Solutions Engineering at NICE and a self-proclaimed AI-driven change agent, personalization zealot, and a strategic thought partner. She joined NICE nearly a year ago after spending the last 10 plus years at the executive level in predictive behavioral routing and analytics solutions. She has a background in behavior analytics and is also a financial advisor. We can't wait to hear from you, Christy. And the other thing is to not forget that this is a lunch and learn. So after the session is over, we will pick a random of up to 20 winners who've participated in our polls, and yes, we do have polls, and questions. Remember, the more participation, the more questions, the better it is. So we will award you a $20 roundtable pizza or Grubhub certificate that we will send to you. So we look forward to hearing from you and hearing the kind of information that you want. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Richard. Okay, thank you, Ellen, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Richard Clevett. I am the Managing Director of our Contact Center Practice here at Packet Fusion, and uh, just really delighted to uh, have everybody here to hear from NICE. Uh, we have recently entered a, an Elevate uh, program with them as one of their partners. Uh, they're an exciting company. Um, you'll hear a lot of great news. And you, if you don't know NICE uh, and you go out on the web and research them a little bit, you'll find out they have been the leader in the CCAS space, uh, from the Gartner Magic Quadrant up in the leader spot for the last seven years running, as well as the workforce optimization and things of that nature. So super excited to have Christy and, and NICE here today. Um, and you know, we, we hear from uh, all of our customers and, and all of you a lot about what are we doing to, you know, how do you get to the cloud and, and how do we transform our business? You know, how do we make our contact center an actual contact center, not a cost center? How can we make it a differentiator to our customers and, and how can we leverage that? Um, you know, how do we focus on that customer experience and that customer journey? And how does that actually provide a level of personalized service? Uh, we all know what good service is like, whether it's in your industry or other industries, and it's impacting how we live our daily lives. And we're all getting very used to um, bots and the artificial, artificial intelligence world um, where the human interaction isn't as prevalent until you actually need them. And so we're really excited to uh, bring NICE here today and Christy with her expertise to share uh, her thoughts and NICE's thoughts on how they're addressing 
uh, these kinds of uh, scenarios for you. So without further ado, I will pass it over to you, Christy. Great, thanks so much. Really appreciate the uh, wonderful intro there, Ellen, and, um, and uh, you as well, Richard. Um, so, you know, as Ellen mentioned, my background's really for the last like two decades plus has been focused in analytics and, and now in, you know, and, and how machine learning and AI really create opportunities for organizations to optimize both business processes as well as kind of that human capital all in using data. Like data is so, so powerful. And um, today we're gonna focus on, you know, that growing role of AI within the CCAS realm. And we'll provide an overview of some of the analytics capabilities that organizations are, are really leveraging to be able to identify what's most applicable or most pressing within their businesses. And then how that CCAS platform, one like CX1 as an example, can really help solve um, some of those pieces for them. So as you can imagine, I was super excited when uh, Richard and Ellen uh, asked if I could uh, come and talk more about you know, AI analytics and machine learning. Um, not only personally, but because it truly is at the core of our corporate strategy and vision for um, you know today, as well as many years into the future. And kind of focusing on NICE's CCAS solution for just a minute, you know, at its core, CX1 really includes five main pillars of solutions and capabilities. And you know, those are all kind of interconnected and together form what we believe is one of the most comprehensive sets of customer experience interaction offerings that are out there. So really quick, I'll touch through those, um, those high level pillars, because I think it really sets the stage for talking about, you know, how we leverage AI and analytics to really help organizations, you know, meet their goals. And if we start all the way on the left, you know, our digital entry point solutions really enable you to give customers kind of that smart beginning to their journey. So right at the digital doorstep, getting them the right content, guiding them to find what, you know, what they're looking for and interacting with them proactively rather than waiting for them to initiate that journey. And then that next step in the, in the, um, in the pillars is really our journey orchestration. So solutions that connect and route customers across their entire journey in a way that's seamless, you know, consistent, smart, all combining those digital channels, you know, with self-service and voice all as one. And we provide um, smart self-service capabilities that really enable you to build intelligent automated conversations that are based on data that tells you what your customer really, really wants and how they express that, you know, along with the ability to find and, um, and deliver the right content and resolutions to their needs. And then when it comes to, you know, that, um, the contact center agent, we're providing kind of those smart ways for them to be prepared in an interaction, as well as engaged in real time while they're working with somebody so that they're knowledgeable, they're empowered, and so that they create the most kind of hyper-personalized and unique interaction for that customer, um, you know, to really, uh, to really try and delight and resolve their, their issues quickly. And in our entire leading suite um, is really, uh, to help understand, analyze, and improve journeys so that you can continuously improve across those customer experiences. So all of those pillars really kind of sit on top of or are informed by Enlighten AI, which is, is really our purpose-built AI engine that's, that's based on CX conversation data and provides specific predictions and decisions and actions for kind of a variety of different use cases. So we're gonna go through some of those different use cases and the solutions that we use to really, really solve for those pieces here um, as, a, as a next step. Um, and I don't think it's gonna come as a surprise to, to anyone on this call that the data-driven technologies have really just rapidly transformed um, the technologies that kind of surround us today you know, that surge, that abundance of data, as well as the advancements in machine learning and technology have truly altered our day-to-day our -day life. You know, it's, it's no longer a matter of if, but it's more how will AI continue to change the way that we live? And, and man, is it continually changing our expectations as customers? You know, if I think about I'm not too young to remember, like never ever leaving the house without my Walkman. 
you know, I had the yellow one, the waterproof one. I thought it was just the coolest technology in the world. I had my cassette tape with my whole 12 songs and I kind of had that on repeat all day long. And if I compare that to today where, you know, like most of you, I walk around with a mobile computer in my pocket. I have a subscription to a streaming service that has 70 million songs available. And, but not only that, that service is actually paying attention to what I'm listening to. It's curating lists of suggested songs for me personally. And in large part, it's doing that to keep me engaged in their platform. And this is just really one example. Like I'm sure you can come up with, you know, many, many others to really reflect how organizations have kind of leaned into that AI driven capability to really capitalize and ultimately change the expectations that customers have. Because it does not matter what industry you're in, whether you're in healthcare or finance or retail or whatever it is, your customers' expectations are aligning with their experiences across anything that they're touching from an AI perspective. And what it's really about for them is kind of making the complex easy, you know, recommending what we like, getting smarter over time, you know, bringing at times even too much convenience to us, you know, and automating, you know, mundane tasks. You know, if I even think about last night, I was laying in bed and it was you know, way past my bedtime and I had a thought of, oh, I forgot to order something. And I literally went on Amazon and clicked a button and it was on my doorstep when I woke up this morning. You know, it's like that, that level of expectation and convenience is bleeding through my expectations of everybody that I interact with as a consumer. So I'm curious to know, you know, if you're using AI and analytics in your organizations today, you know, Richard, I don't know if, if you can launch a poll so that we can get a better idea of um, if people are, are leveraging AI and analytics today in their business. Yeah, that's a that's a great idea. Um, Christy and Sarah, everybody, I'll uh, go ahead and launch our first uh, poll question. And, and while we do that, uh, like you, Christy, I love the streaming music services as well. And uh, I, I use YouTube music all the time. So they're, they're always creating moods for us. Um, so it's amazing what that artificial intelligence behind the scenes is doing for us. Um, but in the meantime, um, a quick question that came up is, um, obviously AI is, is impacting our everyday, but do you find it accessible to companies of all sizes? That's a really great question. I think, you know, in, in recent years, especially within the last couple of years, um, it's become more accessible. I think prior to that, organizations needed to have these big data science teams and really like internal processes to figure out how do they leverage all of this data and really turn it into something that's going to be helping their business in real time. But I think now with, with things like, you know, NICE's Enlightened AI Brain that we've kind of created, there's really like a comprehensive AI and machine learning framework that can really be easily leveraged on behalf of organizations of all sizes. We have organizations that have, you know, 10 contact center agents and organizations that have 60,000 contact center agents, right? So, you know, whether, regardless of where you are on that spectrum, being able to leverage some of these pieces that have really been kind of, you know, purpose built for organizations can really, um, can really help any organization um, start to leverage AI to really change their business. And Christy, I think our, our entire group here, uh, audience, agrees with you. It's a hundred percent across the board. Uh, everyone is seeing a greater role in the transformation of the contact centers with AI. So, great, great good to know. Out. We're all in alignment. Excellent. So, you know, to kind of power, you know, these same types of experiences for your customers and really turn CX into powerful competitive differentiator. We've built in Lightning AI, which is today the industry's only comprehensive like AI and machine learning framework that's specifically designed for customer engagement. So you can really think of Enlighten AI as kind of the core AI brain of CX1 and making smart decisions across the platform is really kind of key. You know, it's the only AI solution that has access to kind of specialized CX data. A lot of that was built around taking tons of data over time around customer experience, really being able to understand what mattered, you know, to customers, and then building out these models so that CX1 has been able to, you know, um, make their applications and processes really smarter within the whole solution itself, 
by kind of embedding this as, as one of the core foundations of the solution. And, and we've embedded that across the entire platform. So all sorts of solutions in the, in the platform have different levels of capabilities around some of this, you know, AI elements, whether it's, you know, quality management solutions or workforce management solutions, whether it's intelligent routing or even like digital self-service, all of those different elements are really starting to be fed by some of these, some of these pieces. And really at the heart of our AI approach is really the understanding that in order to get experiences right, like they have to be built and managed based upon data. I mean, we leverage our large kind of specialized CX data sets to really help organizations stop guessing and, and take that data-driven approach to make their entire contact center smarter. And so how do we really do that? You know, we harness the vast amounts of conversational data that NICE has. So if you can imagine, you know, across um, all of the organizations that we work with, we have just massive amounts of conversational data. So we've been able to leverage that and specifically kind of label it on desired business outcomes and then develop purpose-built models for every in-demand use case that you can kind of think of to really make our platform smarter. And Enlighten AI then kind of breaks down the context and identifies the underlying rules for answering you know, advanced CX questions. Like for example, with Enlighten AI, we can, we can look at things like, you know, discovering the best automation opportunities for self-service. It could be connecting the customer with the best agent based upon, you know, those customer experience type attributes along with like existing logic that you've already built into your contact center. Um, it could be around measuring sentiment and customer experience drivers on 100% of interactions versus the way that a lot of organizations do today is picking a sample, having people manually, you know, manually assess those pieces where there's a lot of variability just in even, you know, that piece versus having a broad stroke of 100% of the interactions being evaluated in the exact same way under the exact same criteria. And then even kind of guiding, you know, agents in real time with soft skills around what's the next, next best action or the tip around what is it that you should be doing in that moment to ensure that it's the, the most effective, you know, conversation with your customer. You know, uh, Christy, that's uh, great information and uh, certainly totally agree with where you're going and NICE is going with this. Uh, I think it's also a, a good time that we'll also uh, reach out to everybody and with, uh, with the poll right in line with that. And then I'll ask you a question as well in terms of of what they think is most important to accomplish, like you just mentioned here, uh, in terms of coaching or real-time uh, soft skills and things of that nature. So uh, for, for everybody to take a quick look, we're gonna launch another poll. And while we're doing that, Christy, if uh, maybe you could also then look at, you know, where does really this enlightening AI and the analytics really bring that value? That's part of also part of the poll is where's that value coming from and, and how do we address that? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I think what we've focused on with AI and analytics today is really designing it to be able to capture key analytics all along that life cycle. So being able to understand things before an interaction even happens, being able to um, being able to understand and guide during that interaction, and then also post interaction, so that you know by being able to understand kind of the before during and after those interactions organizations can really understand the trends that that drive meaningful change to that organization and and to be able to act upon those and i'm actually going to dive into a few solutions and you'll be able to kind of see how that works we'll talk a little bit about you know before the interaction during the interaction and then after the interaction and some of the data that we're able to kind of capture and use to really use those insights to drive actionable change in the organizations that leads to, you know, business, um, you know, solving business challenges that have really concrete ROIs associated with them. And that falls right in line again with, uh, with everybody here attending. They are right split, um, right on customer satisfaction, as well as the positive impact on the agent satisfaction, right? Um, because when you have an agent who uh, is happy and, and able to help and they know they're making a difference, right? You're going to see that markedly on the other side with the customer being satisfied. So uh, I think we're right in line. So great. Fantastic. 
Well, let's um, let's walk through a few of the uh, solutions that we can kind of talk about some of those, you know, before, during, and after scenarios. So, you know, if we talk, if we start with, you know, before the interaction really even happens, you can kind of start as soon as, you know, the, obviously there's a lot of digital components. We kind of, we do, we're not focusing on the digital elements here in this particular presentation, but you can imagine that there's lots of different digital streams and, and analytic solutions that kind of um, pair with some of those um, elements too. But if we kind of look at even the interaction of, you know, IVR, so somebody trying to self-serve, you know, I think today um, IVR is, is really critical in that it allows a customer to accomplish kind of a simple and a straightforward task independently, um, you know, or they're going to end up in your contact center working with an agent, which we know is going to cost 12 times as much as if they're able to self-service themselves. So, you know, by my experience, I think the IVR remains one of the biggest, if not the biggest blind spots that organizations have in regards to customer satisfaction. And I think even more frustrating is that the IVR can sometimes almost feel like a black box. Like as a business, you can know anecdotally that there's something that's not working about your IVR. Um, you can know that you're not getting the containment rates that you're looking for, you know, whether that comes from, you know, online reviews or survey responses or customer complaints or some of those pieces. But you know, the, the data that comes with it and really the analytics associated with it can be a little limited in telling you exactly what aspects of your IVR um, aren't working and what can be done to really improve them. And I think this is definitely a problem worth improving. I know I'm just as guilty as anybody else of like pressing zero over and over or, you know, yelling agent, agent, agent to try and like bypass it. But we know that you know, that's not a goal state for a company, you know, it impacts customer satisfaction and for impacts cost, you know, so being able to have those insights into that customer journey, you know, that start in the IVR can really bring massive savings in an organization through the increased containment and even the self-service analytics can leverage data so that you can stop guessing and really know how the customers might be utilizing that IVR or, or even the self-service capabilities. And then it really provides you more actionable data on where they fall out and impacting kind of containment rates or customer service or even costs. And there's an additional layer to this as well that, um, that we can actually use downstream calls, you know, um, that, that are happening and use conversational data insights to tie back to really understand what are the things that are kind of um, trending and falling out in an organization at this front layer. So there's multiple layers of how we can leverage analytics within kind of that self-service analytics piece that can be extraordinarily impactful and have really, really big results as far as, you know, dollars and cents around the um, IVR itself. But I think like, you know, we know that while self-service capabilities, you know, uh, uh, that have been designed to kind of increase that self-service are there, but we know not all calls should or will be self-serviced. So um, when a customer journey does reach the contact center, we leverage something called Enlighten AI routing, which is really, it's, it's an intelligent um, routing layer within that so that when a call does come to voice and that we're able to combine kind of all you know, combine AI with kind of all the available data sources and add that intelligence to that agent selection process. And the goal is really ensuring that, that we're selecting the most ideal agent for every single customer. So how does that really work? You know, by combining all the available data that we know about a customer, including the data that we bring to the table, which is the largest holistic behavioral database in the industry, we're, we're able to leverage that data in real time, you know, combine all of that with the available data that we're getting from, you know, CX1 solution. And if there's additional data that the customer has that, um, that we want to combine in there, we can leverage all of that to understand the agent's historical performance. And then our machine learning algorithms are able to predict in real time for each unique call for that customer, the best agent to be able to pair with that person in that moment, to be able to have the most unique, personalized, efficient, you know, effective conversation in that moment. And all of that happens in hundreds of milliseconds, that decision-making. But really what it's allowing you to do is arbitrage the large amounts of data behind the scenes to make the ideal pairing connection recommendation before that call even happens. 
And, you know, we see, you know, a reduction overall in AHT as an example of somebody's using this as a cost strategy, you know, of, you know, five to 15%, depending on the different industries and, and um, design. So when you, when you think about it, you know, each have kind of different life experiences, like each one of us have different life experiences and strengths. So being able to, um, to understand kind of some of that natural variability that, that agents have, which is the most amazing untapped pool, you know, of, of um, skill sets, being able to leverage that in real time through intelligent pairing to drive better, more effective conversations with customers, or really turning that variability that exists in your workforce into a direct value that has business ROI and outcome and also drives an increased customer satisfaction experience. Well, Christy, that's a, a lot to absorb there, right? Uh, just thinking about this database, I'm going to ask you a question about that in a moment because you know these kinds of results are just dramatic. Um, but with that said, I'd like to pull everybody to see kind of what they think might be their barriers to getting to these kinds of results. So I'm going to launch a quick, uh, quick poll here in terms of that kind of a question. And while everyone's answering that, um, I'll ask you, Christy, you, you mentioned this a massive amount of behavioral database. How did, you know, how did you collect it? And then how are you really kind of leveraging that data? I mean, you explained a little bit. Yeah, but it's a great question. Deeper. It really is a great question. It's it's so it's so unique. Uh, we're really we're the only organization that has it. I mean, over the last two decades, we've really been amassing um, an incredible amount of data. So, from um, recording and kind of analyzing calls, what we've been able to do is we basically years and years ago we bought the proprietary rights to a behavioral model that was being leveraged by um, by NASA for part of their astronaut selection process. And what we found in that model is it, it's a linguistic based model. So it really relies on the language that people are utilizing. So that's things like tone, tempo, syntax, grammar, sentence structure, word placement, all the different types of human language. And what it really did is broke the you know, use of language into kind of six high level categories that we found are incredibly predictable. And so what we're able to do is um, over time, we were able to, you know, as we were um, uh, analyzing these calls, we built millions of behavioral algorithms so that we were able to um, understand what those preferences were of the population. So with that, um, we amassed a, a database that we, we now have that, that has the majority of the North American um, population's communication and experience preferences. Now it's all anonymized. It's you know a high level of security asset, but we're able to leverage that in real time to contribute to that decision making process, so that we're not only using kind of CX one you know ACD level data, we can potentially be using data that organizations contribute if they want to, and then we're also bringing those insights from the database. So it allows us to really um, really understand you know what the preferences are of the customer that's calling. And then we're able to leverage, you know, historical data to understand how agents have historically performed when working with, um, you know, people that have those types of attributes or preferences. So it's really, it's a fascinating, we could talk about it for hours, but um, sure. it's a fascinating element. No, appreciate that answer. And, and, and looking at the results of, of our poll in terms of the challenges and the barriers, uh, if you look at the slide, uh, that uh, Christy has up right now where you personalize every interaction and, and you benefit from the perfect agent pairing. Uh, the lack of knowledge and technical skills were two of the barriers that jumped out in, in the polls. They were really neck and neck uh, in the challenges that um, you know everyone here is saying they're facing. And when you look at uh, enlightened AI, the way you were describing it, right? Being able to get that customer to the right agent um, and then providing them with the tools by leveraging the data that they have about those customers is going to help drive, you know, knock down that barrier of that lack of knowledge and even the technical skills to get there because of all this, this huge database that you have of, of analytics. So um, just really exciting where you're, you're really helping drive this industry right now. So uh, we're excited yeah. to hear more. Absolutely. And I think too, Richard, the great part about Enlightened AI routing is all of that's happening behind the scenes. Like there's no behavioral change that's required from, 
you know, the agents, from supervisors, anything. It's all really just deleveraging data to make decisions. But the next piece that you were talking about are really around, you know, how are you providing some of the technical expertise or getting over some of those barriers? We're really able to answer that with real-time interaction guidance. And I think that's, you know, once we've connected them with the optimal agent, um, you know, there's there's still elements that have to, to come onto the call, right? We're, we're looking for those agents to be as prepared as possible, as engaged, as efficient. But um, if we can help guide them, you know, to their next best answer, or the next best behavior, or the next best action, you know, with real-time interaction guidance, it can exponentially increase, you know, that, that particular interaction. And I think there's really two primary ways that organizations have really led, leveraged capabilities to, you know, decrease um, uh, agent onboarding time and increase productivity and even have additional decreases in, you know, metrics like AHT as an example that we talked about or, or even increases in things like revenue. And our, um, our solution for real-time interaction guidance, we leverage some of the pre-built out of the box in Lightning AI models. And with these, we've identified um, and extracted kind of nine core industry agnostic agent behaviors. As an example, it's like showing empathy, demonstrating ownership, promoting self-service. And these behaviors, if constantly demonstrated by agents, have proven to have a positive influence on their ability to make those personal connections with the customer you know, respond to their needs in real time and even deliver kind of a, a really exceptional experience. So using um, Enlighten AI, we can automatically, you know, measure customer sentiment as well as those agent soft skills in real time. And there's a dashboard that's kind of showing and demonstrating that in real time and even prompting agents on their desktop, you know, where it's integrated directly into kind of their CX1 mask max dashboard. So right, the dashboard that they're already using while they're on a call, it's kind of alerting them to specific behavioral insights. So are conversations going well? Are there certain actions that you should take immediately making suggestions? Um, or what, what will help increase kind of that customer satisfaction or improve the resolution or efficiency along the way? So, you know, this essentially provides kind of real-time coaching for agent behaviors and, and helps those agents more quickly identify and ease caller distress, which can, you know, lead to more effective calls altogether. But I think in addition to those soft skills models that we're able to use in here to kind of drive some of that customer experience, we also have the ability to configure what I call phrase-based alerts. And that really provides real-time messaging um, to the agent based upon what's said or what's not said. And I think that um, what I mean by that is like, a certain life event, you know, you can have an action that they should take place if they mention, um, or you can, if you don't, if the system say something that they should say for compliance reasons, it can remind them through the dashboard um, those processes so that they're ensured to do that on the call itself. So that real time guidance, you know, based upon the custom you know, phrase-based alert instructions provides, um, uh, you know, provided reduce the agents like non-interaction time that's required to be able to identify appropriate actions. And this is going to lead to lower HT, lower costs, ensure the agents are following kind of those best step practices. So it's a great way, you know, especially if you have a growing sales force to really be providing kind of real-time guidance, you know, while the agents are on the call um, as well. Well, absolutely. At the end of the day, right? We're dealing with uh, you know, the AI engine and then at, ultimately we're going to end up with someone if we have a very complex, more personalized type of interaction going on. So mm -hmm. to give them tools at, you know, on their desktop is, is um, super important. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, so we've talked about kind of optimizing self-service and, and voice interactions in real time with AI, but, but once the interaction is actually complete, you know, you're really able to, that's when you're able to gain a lot of insights across every one of your channels and to be able to get continuous insight across like hundred percent of your interactions with something like CX1 interaction analytics. So ultimately inter, inter, 
it ultimately like analytics in general is going to provide you the data that you need to be able to make those mm -hmm. data driven decisions that we've been kind of talking about the whole hour. And, and it also enables you to um, improve efficiency, improve performance, improve compliance, you know, with, with kind of those constant analyses that, that are possible, but all within a unified view. So, you know, um, interaction analytics is going to leverage um, a system of advanced kind of natural language understanding and machine learning that's going to analyze every single one of those customer interactions and really produce that rich data that's going to be applied across those everyday decisions. And that, that happens whether you're um, talking about digital or self-service options or how to coach your agents or, you know, um, different workflow or processes pieces. And I think that, you know, having a solution like this that's in like an AI engine at the core and that helps you really have a powerful set of really valuable analytics tools. Um, and I've seen organizations use them kind of in three general categories. You know, one is, you know, entity detection, and that's really going to help to easily identify key pieces of information that your customers are kind of discussing on interactions. You know, things like, like plans or organizations or life events or current changes. You know, all of those different things are going to be revealed kind of at a glance of who and what your customers care about most at any given time. So because we know that that can change, change sometimes the wind with the economy, the industry, you know, all of those different pieces. So really understanding, you know, what needs focus from an attention perspective can be incredibly valuable. Um, I think the second piece that we see um, in, in interaction analytics utilized for a lot is sentiment analysis. And that really helps to objectively detect kind of the, and monitor even like the feelings or the attitudes that are expressed throughout customer interaction. So by intelligently interpreting and, and really scoring the speaker's words and phrases for sentiment and emotion, these are gonna allow you to, to really deliver a strong understanding of what's your brand perception right now and what specifically is challenging, you know, within your customer experiences. And then I think that that third piece is really around content classification. So helping to automatically, you know, organize or sort interactions into kind of predefined sets of relevant categories, you know, by uncovering patterns in both the frequency and potentially the co-occurrence of that topic. You know, these tools are really, they can highlight themes um, that are overall driving customer interactions and really help you to predict, you know, how to best optimize for those future interactions. And I think that the data in general that's produced by IA can also be integrated and used to enhance kind of other products across the entire CX1 suite. So, you know, there's truly kind of a value add application, you know, from day one. So, um, you know, I think, you know, overall, as you're kind of thinking about it, it's, it's really about understanding, being able to have a place that's going to provide you kind of automated visuals and key insights um, that, that you're able to track and understand and know to really understand kind of the sentiment of your customers, where you need to drive change and, and what's going to help your business to, you know, really achieve, um, uh, achieve uh, you know, the ROIs that you're looking for. And, and Christy, uh, to that point, you know, we're, we're starting to get a handful of other questions coming in, which is just great. Um, and, and one of them um, uh, really has to do with, um, if you had to pick a place for, for a company to start with AI and analytics, you know, what would you recommend here? Um, you know, if I, what I would say is like, you know, if there had to be a place to start, I, I would honestly start with, um, understanding like what are the pain points that the organization currently has and um, within those within those pain points or those those kind of scenarios um, we can we can work together to understand which solutions really solve those key challenges or pain points most effectively but I would say you know if if you're an organization that's kind of starting from scratch and you don't really have a lot of these solutions today, I think, you know, the one that we just talked about around having like an interaction analytics or something um, can really help you to identify what some of those are. So understanding, 
the trends from a data perspective so that you really do have quantifiable, you know, trends that you can, um, that you can understand, like how much customers are talking about your competitors, like what are specific pain points that they're experiencing towards your organization? You know, what are some key processes that really need to change in order for you to be successful? And I think, um, you know, analytics is really oftentimes kind of that core foundation to the building blocks. And then there's all sorts of things that can be kind of built as well. It's not a requirement. You can implement any of these things independently without having any of the others. Um, but if you had to pick a place to start, this is probably the most informative across your entire business. Uh, that, that, that's great advice for everybody. And um, I know I kind of uh, led to you a little bit early uh, for uh, where you guys are uh, with some of your innovations and things. Um, uh, on your next slide, uh, but before you get to before you even get to that one, if, if you wouldn't mind, um, a couple of others are asking um, when you're considering CCAS um, and uh, to go because they're on a premise based system today. You know, what kind of advice would you have for them to help make that transition? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, um, I think it's a really valid question, right? Uh, up until a couple of years ago. I think uh, you know there definitely was some momentum in cloud, but I think the pandemic taught a lot of people really quickly uh, the value of CCAS and kind of that cloud solution um, because it really focused on you know an organization's ability to have agility and to scale really quickly if there was some sort of need. And I think one of the greatest advantages of really moving to a solution like um, CX One or a, um, a cloud-based solution is is being able to kind of seamlessly expand or contract your workforce, you know, regardless of location, are they in the office or are they remote work from home? And do you have the flexibility to make those turns and changes super quickly? And I think the other key advantage um, is really around um, consolidation of vendors to align in one of the like kind of the best in suite platforms. So I know CX1 as an example is kind of a best in suite platform, which means that you know, across the platform, all of our solutions that you can add on are really kind of best in suite. So compared to competitors, you know, they're, they're stronger analytics solutions because we've kind of spent all of this energy in building out these AI and analytics platforms. And what it allows you to do is really add different functionality as your business needs it. And that can be done in weeks. You know, you can spin up these solutions potentially in weeks, you know, depending on what they are. And even as an example, we work with an organization that that transitioned over um, to CX1, you know, uh, last year. They had a business event that just occurred that they that was unexplainable to them. So they reached out and said, hey, we need to understand. We need to un understand something better. And um we said, great, you know, self-service analytics should give you that level of understanding. And we're working to get it spun up right away so that they can get the insights they need to make the, the changes in their business decisions. So I think um, agility and speed is really probably the, the biggest piece, but I think having truly like that one vendor source too across a, a really um, successful um, platform can give you so many, um, so much flexibility, you know, as your business changes and as some of those demands happen as well. Sure, uh, great insight there, Christy. Uh, some more questions are coming in. Before I do that, I'm gonna launch uh, our last poll of, of this uh, Lunch and Learn. Um, so uh, be on the lookout, we're just, just curious um, if uh, you're investigating uh, AI projects in the next, uh, you know, the next uh, coming year uh, for our audience. Um, and in the meantime, kind of echoing what you just uh, said, uh, Christy, about what you can drive and, um, you know, all of the revenue that you can help drive and the CSAT scores and things of that nature. Um, and, and as we're seeing everybody coming in, it looks like everybody does have AI projects in play. And, and that's consistent with what we hear with all of our customers as well. Uh, but one of the challenges that we always hear from them is this... Uh, this theory of uh, dirty data, right? Do I have accurate information about Richard Clevett in our database so that when I reach out to you, whatever form, whatever mode, you have 
my current email address, you have my current phone number, you have all my current info. And, and you know, when as customers have grown over time, you know, I might move, I might get a new phone number. How often do we update our databases and have quote clean data? So I guess from you know, the fact that you guys have this huge uh, engine that you can rely on now. And, and like you said, spin up things in in short periods of time and have immediate impact. So how, how would you say what you're doing today can help those challenges of, of having that good data in the background to help drive uh, this kind of analytics in AI? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, you know, data, data and having clean data, I think it's a challenge of every organization. I think, uh, um, you know, and obviously having usable data is really important, but I'm kind of of the belief that timely, you know, action on semi-perfect data can really out benefit no action waiting for perfect data. So I think one of the advantages too of, of moving to a CCAS solution like CX1 is there's so much rich and valuable data that's all coming in through that same solution and flowing through that so same solution. So like all of the different um, solutions that we talked about as part of CX1 today, like that data is really, much of that data is shareable across those different solutions as well. So it can be kind of fed across some of those pieces. So that can really help, I think, you know, to have great data sources that are kind of, you know, some of that data is kind of self-contained within the solution. And then I think it gives you the opportunity to then focus on cleaning kind of your data that resides outside the platform that you can eventually kind of augment, you know, insights into some of these solutions with, like as an example, we talked about, you know, routing, we can take in other data like CRM data or, um, you know, other agent level data, et cetera, across the, across the business itself. And eventually, you know, um, utilize that data to further enrich some of those solutions. It's not required for it, but, um, but there can be aspects where it can, you can help leverage that even more by feeding some of those different pieces into. That's super helpful, uh, Christy, because again, that's one of the big challenges that we are hearing uh, you know, every day. Um, and then I took, uh, another great question that, that came in was really helping build that business case with these solutions so that um, they can justify the spend to move this way, right? You know, there's that thought, wow, I have to get a lot of money to do this. And how do I build an ROI and a, a TCO with this? And, you know, how do I measure success here? So um, based on on your, your expertise here and what you've already done at NICE, you know, how would you guys address those kinds of concerns? Yeah, I think, I mean, foundationally, you should be able to build a business case off of, you know, any of the, you know, any of the different solutions that you're really to looking to, you know, bring into your organization. I think um, what we often look at as a starting point is really, what are the, what are the pain points or challenges that you're looking to solve for? You know, there's generally variability in business practice there. So whether that's, you're looking to reduce operating costs and you're trying to do that by, you know, reducing call volume or increasing supervisor span of control, or you need to take AHT out or reduce agent churn, you know, whatever those types of things are, um, or you're looking to bring more revenue into the company through some aspect of the business. I think by being able to look at, you know, some of those like key challenges, um, we have, um, you know, we have formats that are kind of built out on the back end where even just looking at, you know, operational metrics that you have today, we can, um, we can estimate, you know, the out, what those outcomes would look like based upon, you know, what we've done with, you know, other organizations. So really being able to kind of build those, I think you can partner together on it. But even, um, I'll give you an example too, you know, when we're looking at AI and analytics, you know, some of our solutions are really designed around those ROI and driving those ROIs. So, you know, we talked a little bit about Enlightened AI routing as an example. You know, we know based upon experience that we're going to drive somewhere between a 5 and a 15% decrease in the operations costs. And, but that solution is specifically designed and it's really unique in its capability that 
um, it has built in A-B testing. So we're able to automatically and systematically kind of toggle the solution on and off in short intervals throughout the day so that um, we can have, we can look across the same agent population, all the same count, call types, all the same seasonality, all the same external factors, and be able to tell you specifically at any moment, how much value is that solution driving in addition to, you know, the business practice that you, that you had before. So, um, you know, you're able to really compare your key KPIs, you know, when that solution is on versus off to, to have a measurable piece associated with it. So you always know, and anybody always knows through a dashboard that's built into, you know, CX1, how much benefit is specifically being driven from this solution, because we know that there's likely five other solutions that are trying to do the same thing within your organization. So being able to be able to isolate that and really be able to, um, to tell you what specifically is this solution doing can be extraordinarily valuable to organizations. Oh, that's uh, fantastic to, to hear, especially that immediate feedback on how well something's doing, right? So you, know, you build your business case and then be able to get um, and you implement, but to, to know how are you doing, right? And see see that real time and be able to have the, the metrics behind it is, is super key. Uh, you know, there's a number of the awards here, you know, everybody uh, loves to talk about their awards uh, and you've had this up, but you haven't said a word about them. So. Uh, I want everybody to know, you know, along with being, uh, there's a reason that NICE is in the uh, leader's quadrant of the magic quadrant, right? And everybody talks about the magic quadrant. There are four sparks, uh, parts of that quadrant and the leaders is the one in the top right, which is where NICE has been for seven years running. Everybody's been trying to catch them and uh, some go up, some come down, but NICE remains up far up to the right in terms of innovation and far to the right in terms of execution. Um, and I think that's um, seen here by by Gartner's, um, you know, their associates, right? We don't see Gartner here. You're, you're showing Forrester and a few others. So anything in particular that um, jumped out that you guys are particularly proud of? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, I think you've stated it well across across the um, the industry. We're kind of known as the market leaders and a lot of these different pieces and well-recognized by some of the analysts, um, whether that's been Forrester or Gartner or DMG Consulting, some of those different pieces. Um, but I think overall, like I, one of the things that, that I get so excited about, you know, working here is I think our CEO is truly a visionary. Like he is um, always looking years and years ahead of what the market's doing today and, per, you know, working to predict what are, you know, where is that marketplace going and, uh, you know, working to bring in companies or capabilities to be able to do that. So you'll always see that NICE is very much on the cutting edge of um, where the marketplace is going and really building solutions so that companies of all size can, can execute very seamlessly um, and, and, and do that by really having, you know, great data insights through AI driven solutions and, and, um, and, uh, the, you know, big focus on digital channels too, which we didn't dive into much in this, in this particular presentation, but there's a, a whole, you know, another suite around digital that's, that's, a, you know, a similar conversation to this, but looking at, uh, different parts of the business too. Yeah. And you bring up a great point, Christy, right? That, um, you know, businesses large and small, you know, NICE can address those needs. Uh, a lot of times people think, I know in the industry that NICE, you know, you're, you're the big leader. So can, can you fit down at the small to medium-sized business, which you, which you obviously can, and you can help drive those businesses. And then going back to how we started, right? Giving, giving companies a competitive advantage uh, within the contact center by driving um, driving results with AI and analytics. And as you just mentioned, which would be a whole nother lunch and learn that we could spend hours on is that whole digital transformation, you know, um, and how all of your AI and your analytics could help drive that from just your simple chat bot and taking that to the next level of self-service. Uh, I know we focused on the IVR and the phone call, but taking that to the next step I know that NICE is at the forefront of that as well with uh, chatbots and, and agent assist and things of that nature. So uh, really uh, super excited to hear 
um, how you guys continue to push that envelope and help push the CCAS market and industry in general. So uh, super to hear that. Um, Alan, I, I think we're uh, coming up near the end. Um, yes, I we've get had- you back involved here. Yeah, what an enlightening conversation, <laughs> Christy and Richard. Just, I know I've learned a lot. I was jotting down a lot of things and I know our audience really excited that there was so much participation in answering the polls and the questions that came up, just a, a wealth of information and knowledge for this session. So I appreciate that very much. I wanna thank everyone for coming. And just as a reminder, uh, we will be randomly selecting um, some folks to get roundtable gift certificates and we'll send them out an email in the next day or so. We will also have the recording available too. And um, any other questions, uh, just go ahead and you can reach out to Packet Fusion and uh, we'll get back to you. So thank you everybody and have a good rest of your day.